Hi all, Tim coming here again from another episode of Coffee Geek TV. Today we're coming to you live all the way from 186 Cafe and Bar with my good friend Peng. And we're doing something a little bit special today. What we're doing is we're doing AeroPress coffee. I'm really excited about this is because we've actually never done AeroPress on any of the YouTube videos that are about to come in the future. But uh, we're doing things a bit different, like with the Facebook Live, I think it's going to be a bit more interactive for people. So what we've got today with the AeroPress is we have this very special coffee that's come all the way from the US. One of my very well-known favorite roasters in the world. It's called Stomp Town Coffee Roasters. Um, I think it's from Portland. Um, they are, aren't they? They're in Portland, that's yes, right. Yeah, Portland. Portland. And uh, so you've already tried this coffee. What are your thoughts on the coffee so far? Um, I love the taste and the one who gave me is the name is Annie Wicker. Annie Wicker? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, he said that he, uh, somehow they love that bean so much. And this is a direct trade from the farm to the, to the roast. Really? So, direct trade, single origin, there it is. And they've roasted it specifically for pour over and air efforts, right? Fantastic. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's, let's see what you can do for us today with the, the air press. All right, today's my elephant. First time. <laughs> your first time Aeropress, really? Yes, awesome. What do you usually do when you when you make your coffee anyway? Do you usually do uh, V60 or pour overs? Um, What's your favourite style of coffee? Normally I do pour overs. Um, but okay. after I went to Bangkok for the uh, for the album this Thailand Champion, so uh, yeah. I thought the idea was how and I like to try this one. Yeah. And at the Aeropress Championship was the first Aeropress Championship they held ever, wasn't it, in Bangkok? Yes, recently, yeah. Like I remember seeing the pictures from that's cool. So, what are you doing right now with the coffee? You've just weighed it, and how many grams was that that you weighed the coffee? Um, 20 grams. 20 grams, okay. So you're going to put 20 grams in the, in the uh, grinder. So we're going to old school today, hand ground, which is pretty exciting. You gotta put a, this is one thing that keeps us looking strong. <laughs> Being the Bristol is actually doing hand around. Oh, oh, two viewers, say hi. Good ah, Adam and Matt. Oh, and Chan. Good to see you guys. Cool, cool. Thanks for chiming in. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That was quick, actually. She's just strong, man. <laughs> So, Peng's, I'll tell you, well, uh, Peng's doing that with the, with the Aeropress, you can continue on. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about Peng's Cafe. Uh, it's actually located north of the city of Chiang Mai, probably about, or oh, how, how long did you say, 15 minutes north of the old city? Yes, about 13 kilometres. 13 kilometres, right? it's right, literally across the road from the major university, so it's in a fantastic location to be able to get all the school kids come over and actually... Uh, uh, have his coffee obviously after the day and come and study here. But like, if you want to grant, if you just want to do like a bit of a pan view of this cafe and just show a little bit after we've sort of done this, you can actually see how beautiful space this is. It's actually how long you've had it now? About a year. About a year. About a year. Yeah, and they've and it's actually a bit of a an architectural marvel. Uh, really beautifully laid out with funky furniture and a nice uh, mezzanine floor. Um, I think it's going to be a little go-to for coming to do some work from anyway going down the track. Yeah. So okay, so what we've done is we're doing not the inverted style AeroPress, this is this the standard style where we just basically put it over the top, put a nice little paper filter in the in the bottom there. Sometimes you can actually put a, a metal filter in there, but you do get a little bit of uh, dust in the bottom of the of your, your cup. A bit like a French press, but way, way better. Um, so yeah, what we're doing at the moment is trying to get the water temperature right. What water temperature are you doing that at the moment? Um, well, according to the manual, they said that 80 degrees Celsius. 80. That is fantastic. That's actually really interesting because I was just in Japan recently and I went to a really fancy pants, um, sort of like a, uh, what would you call it, cafe bar or whatnot. And uh, he was actually doing that too, um, uh, brewing his coffee between 82 and 78. And the amazing results that come from it is actually more full flavour. And I was like, oh, okay. I've never seen that before because usually the standard is always 92 to 88 degrees. But um, yeah, I. I guess that's what coffee is all about, right? Experimenting, dialing it in, see what you can, whatever you get the best flavour from, right? Yes, that's so, correct. Cool. Okay. So where are we sitting at the moment? Still boiling. 
So you have to be a bit patient, guys, and watch this happen. So, but um, while we wait for that temperature to drop down, this is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, is this uh, like a miniature Chemex? This particular one? Okay. This one? Is, that, is that a miniature Chemex? Actually, it's, it's quite funny. This one is the, is the base for the um, cold brew matcha tea. Cold brew matcha tea, alright. So, yeah. Oh, okay, so that goes in there like that. Cold brew matcha tea. It's like, uh, straight out of Japan, obviously, because matcha tea is Japanese. But yeah, that'll be fascinating, maybe one day. And just because I love coffee doesn't mean I don't like to drink tea too, actually. Once I've had about four coffees in the day, I'm hitting the tea by about five o'clock in the afternoon just to flush it out of the system, right? But yeah, fascinating, good. Alright. Okay, cool. So, how are we going for the. Okay, we're about 90 degrees now, we're just trying to get down to 80. Alright. So, is there anything you've done particularly with the water? Um, does it just. Uh, do you use a specific type of water or do you just use normal uh, water that gets delivered? I try to experience. You try to ex experiment? Okay, sure. That's interesting. Some say that like uh, minimal water is to bring up the good taste of the coffee. Really? Just pure water? Or, or mineral water you mean? Mineral so? water. Oh, mineral water, some you, say. You remember the Akama coffee farm that we visited? Yes. There is the, like, uh, the water that came out from the mountain. Yeah. They send water to the lab. They said that it's like... Uh, like spring water? Yes. Yeah, spring water is the best, yeah. Yeah, it's like more natural, I guess, isn't it? We're getting the perfect pH levels and all the mineral content and whatnot. Like I was telling you this morning, I, I was just telling Ping that uh, usually I do what we call a, a pour over V60 uh, coffee every morning, um, which is like a V60, V60 shaped cone thing with a paper filter in it. And uh, I just, the first time this morning, I experimented with mineral water and I even noticed a difference with the the way the water would pour out the spout, but not only that, but how the full mate, full flavoured feel you would get with the actual, okay. with the actual yeah, yeah, go for it whenever you're ready. Okay. So the, the grinder's in the bottom, so we just fill this up a little. I'm not sure what the uh, ping style of doing uh, the uh, uh, the AeroPress or how we produce. Everyone's got their own different style. You can put a little bit of water in there and you can stir it in to sort of get the grinds wet. Some people fill it right up to the top and then stir it. So we get the AeroPress stirrer. I go by the manual. Go by the manual, whatever, whatever you do. Second. Yeah. There's no right or wrong way to do coffee. Yes. Actually, I have the. Actually, my friend, that, um, they opened the, the cafe in, in Chiang Mai Tao. The name oh. is Saman Mi. Saman Mi? Yes. In Chiang Mai, is it? In Chiang Mai. But they just moved to Lampang. Oh, they, did they? They used to be like an um, Aero Place bar. Oh, oh, I'm, oh. Wait, is that the one that's um, down near Mumuang Soi Pok, Chiang Mai? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sure, sure. So, oh, I know there's a little tiny AeroPress bar. Oh, I know the one I was supposed to. Oh, no, I was supposed to do, do a do coffee gig thing there a while ago. But um, oh, they need the lump hang. Oh, I'll have to go and check them out again and say hi. Yeah. All right, so it's a bit like a French press, but different. It's like a complete rubber piston that sort of pushes it down, and you've got to put a bit of effort into it. But um, the flavours that you do get from this is quite really, really um, interesting. Um, if you could. Pretty much take the same bean and put it and do it, brew it in a different style, and it tastes completely different. Maybe resemble similar things, but but uh, that's the beauty of coffee. There's uh, there's a thousand ways to do something to get a different flavour. Look at that! Fantastic! Fantastic! Mm. Mm, interesting aromas. A little bit of black tea. But I also get something nice and yeah. sweet as well. There's definitely like a really nice sweet black tea from that, isn't there? Black tea, yeah. Oh, look at that winner! <laughs> winner. One point for Tim. Uh, one point, one point. <laughs> Boy Scout Tim, right? <laughs> but there's also a nice sweetness that comes from it too, yeah. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Here we go. So what do we got here? It's uh, cranberry plum and black tea. All right. So the, probably the cranberry will probably come more of like a, like the flavour as opposed to. Aroma, um, but uh, here we go. Huh? Cracking up. Oh, it's a Colombian La Esperalda. Oh wow, that's pretty interesting. That is. Well, I tried that recently. Far off that cup, and we we're gonna taste this one. Oh okay. Oh, it's a different a different bean altogether. No. Oh no. Oh same one. Ah okay. Right, so what we're doing here is he's just sort of aerating the coffee. It's a bit like wine, right? He's sort of instead of using a 
you know, with the fancy, I forgot the wine tools that they're out there now, but um, essentially you just sort of give it a bit of a slosh between them just to get the air moving through it. And oh, this is going to be exciting. Here we go. Oh. Definitely. Definite plums coming from that. Oh. Mm, really good. All right. Would you like to try with me? Sure. Yeah, sure. He can try in a minute. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay, as I say in Thailand, chung gao, na? Yeah, chung gao means like cheers. Definitely that black tree. I mean, just a slight bit of bitterness on the edges, but um, I really do like the. Um, yeah, I do really love the <laughs> for, for who? Oh, the cameraman. The cameraman. Do you want to try, Mr. Cameraman? Here you go. Here you go. Give it a go. <laughs> Quite tasty. Oh, yeah, there we've got, uh, <laughs> got stuff. Usually, I don't like to trust my first taste because it, ha it hasn't run through the palate. Yeah, usually you get the real driven form, and there it is, and then just go over once, and then I like to go a bit more. But yeah, it's very lightly. A little bit, I would actually go to say it's a little bit zesty on the edges too, you know, but like very full mouth feel. I definitely sense that it's purely black, uh, black tea driven, with, um, but I don't really get much of the cranberry, like they say. Maybe that's probably where the little bit of sourness might come from, is the cranberry, I would say. Yeah. A little bit of sour too, which would be carrying the flavours. Actually, it's a very good, it's actually quite a tasty, quite a tasty coffee. Mm. What are your thoughts? Um, the plum is like a similar to my cover friend. Yeah. Oh. It tastes like plum, but... Kunle, yeah, yeah. Actually, I have no idea about cranberry. <laughs> yeah, no, never, never tasted cranberry. Oh, okay, fresh cranberries yes. before. Usually, I try cr dry cranberries. That's usually where I get them from, right? Or oh, cranberry juice. It's a pretty fancy little little pouch they've got there for the car. Anyway, so that's that's it from us here. You can just do a quick tour, quick around, and just check people out there, or show them around and have a look. But anyway, uh, Tim and my good friend Peng and cameraman Grant. Please give him a, a cheers for this. Um, coming to you from another episode of Coffee Geek TV, doing some special life. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to follow along, there's all the bits and pieces there from Facebook to YouTube to Instagram. That's another good one. Um, yeah, just follow along. Um, and uh, otherwise, we'll upload this again on YouTube later. But thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Coffee <laughs> <laughs>